Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. In this episode, we're going to dig a little deeper into the trigger mechanism of a Ruger American Rimfire bolt action rifle chambered in 22 long rifle. I've already removed the stock from this and uh, so you can see the trigger mechanism. Um, the only adjustment that comes with this from the factory is actually on the front end of the trigger housing group right there and it's a small Allen, Allen screw which you can adjust to control the amount of trigger pull it requires to fire this rifle. There are no adjustments for amount of take up or creep or over travel. Down. Uh, I think the factory pulls typically run between three and five pounds. As I recall, a generation ago, a three pound trigger on a hunting rifle was sort of the de facto standard. They were good to go. And I'm a bit surprised to see a lot of the uh, members on, on forums and are talking about, oh, that is so unsatisfied. In fact, we need a one pound, we need a two pound or a one pound trigger pull. Um, maybe for target shooting, uh, fine, and you're on a controlled range. You're walking around through the woods with a, a trigger pull that light, in, in my opinion, may be a bit of a handicap. I wouldn't be comfortable with that, especially if you're, you know, your weather, hands are get cold, fingers get numb, uh, you got gloves on. Um, that's a recipe for, for uh, a disaster, in my opinion. However, these, uh, the, the talk of the light trigger pull and the pursuit of that got me curious, and so I replicated some of their experiments. Uh, one of the, the common thing that people are doing is either is taking out the trigger return spring and replacing it either with a spring that removed from a ballpoint pen and shortened down to the same length, or removing the trigger return spring completely and just using the rifle without it. Um, so I, I replicated all of those experiments and uh, just to see what we could get and what kind of trigger pull I got. You probably wondered, who on earth still uses an old RCBS fish scale style trigger pull gauge when there are all these digital ones are out there? Well, I do. A 49 ounces. Maybe at uh, <clears throat> kind of telling how old I'm getting to be. We we'll do a couple pulls here. Forty-eight. Well, wow. well, fifty-three on that one. All right. Don't worry. I have my. Fish scale RCBS uh, trigger pull gauge measured and NIST certified every year. So we're good to go. Here's a shot of the three springs that I compared with one another. The first one is the original equipment manufactured part out of Ruger. Um, all three springs are about the same diameter, have about the same length. Uh, the biggest difference is actually the spring wire diameter. The Ruger spring is 32 thousandths in diameter. Uh, I grabbed a random ballpoint pen spring and uh, clipped it off. I trimmed it a little bit long. It's uh, about three quarters of an inch instead of 11 sixteenths. But the biggest difference is that the wire diameter is only 16 thousandths of an inch. Uh, and the last one I found was actually a pack of springs I bought out of McMaster car. I got the uh, McMaster item number there. Um, they actually come in at 7 eighths of an inch long, but I trimmed it down to 11 sixteenths, and the wire diameter on it is 26 thousandths. I'll get a better shot of the, the table that includes all of the trigger pulls. Uh, with the Ruger spring, I just kind of went to extremes to see what would happen. So I turned it two, time, two full turns out and three full turns in, which in my opinion is about the limit of how far you can adjust that screw. The screw isn't all that long, and the, the threaded hole isn't all that long either. So if you go much further than a couple turns in or out, you're really getting down to a minimum thread engagement and run the risk of that, that adjustment screw falling right out or falling right in. So with a flush screw in the uh, trigger housing group, I was getting about 52 ounces. Uh, backed out all the way, I managed to, down two turns, I dropped 
about three ounces, so I'm right at three pounds. And in three full turns, I was up to 72 ounces. I tried the ballpoint pen spring, and I got down all the way down to about 24 to 25 ounces. And it, you see, it didn't really make much difference whether I was two turns out or, or all the way flush there. That's about as low as it goes. I also picked up a spring that I, I thought would be a good happy medium, maybe just slightly lighter than the original equipment manufacturer. And I bought it from McMaster Car and the part number's on there. This one is though I tested the most from all the way from two turns out, one turn out all the way to two turns in. And I, the trigger pull, I, I tested three times with each one of these settings. And it ranged all the way from a light of 34 all the way up to just over three pounds again at two turns in. Finally, I ran a test with no trigger return spring at all, and I was getting about 18 ounces, maybe a little bit more, so about a pound and a half was as light as my rifle would go. Having looked at that chart, one might think, wow, no trigger spring is the great way to go. I'm down to a pound and a half. Boy, that's great. Uh, let me show you what the problem is with that and, and, and why I think that's a very dangerous practice to try. Uh, I'm gonna set this rifle up and, and again, try it with no spring, the ballpoint pen spring and the spring that I got from McMaster Car. And, and let's, let's take a little look-see and, and see what happens when, when we do that. Okay, here's the side view of the uh, trigger group on the Ruger American Rimfire. I've got the uh, barreled action clamped in my vise so I can, I'm kind of hands-free right now and hopefully this holds a little steadier. Uh, here's the trigger. Uh, more importantly, what I want to bring to your attention is this little window right here that shows the trigger to sear engagement. And I'm going to zoom in a little closer on that and show you what happens if we, uh, with, with various trigger return springs or no return spring at all. Stay tuned. Okay, I've got it set up right now. I'm going to zoom in on that uh, sear, trigger sear engagement window and uh, the action is unloaded, uh, bolt is cocked. Uh, I have no trigger return spring in the trigger right now whatsoever, and I'm gonna just pull the trigger, and that's what happens. But let's, let's create a scenario where, I, here's my concern. I start to pull the trigger and I decide Something comes up where I decide, you know, I don't want to make that shot, but I've already taken up and I started to pull back. Haven't quite broken it yet. And I, you know, oh, the squirrel went back in his tree, in his hole, whatever. I don't want it. And I let up my finger on the trigger. I just let it off. And guess what? There is no trigger return spring to re-engage that uh, trigger and sear engagement. I'm going to push on the back of the trigger and re-engage it. When you let your finger up, it should do that automatically, and it isn't. And in my opinion, setting a rifle up like that where you have zero trigger return pressure and, and you, the mechanism will not fully re-engage the, the sear engagement overlap when you take your finger off the trigger, uh, to me that is a very dangerous and foolish setup to have. I'm going to uh, show you again here. If I pull that without pulling too far. See, so I just started pulling the trigger and I stopped and I've removed my finger completely from the trigger right now and it's hanging there just on the hair edge. It shouldn't be doing this. Um, this time we're repeating that same experiment, but I have the ballpoint pen spring made up, which gives us that lovely 24 ounce trigger pull. But uh, let's see what happens if we try to uh, pull the trigger halfway, but then decide to abort that shot. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take my finger off the trigger and nothing happens. It does not return it to a fully engaged uh, situation there. I'm gonna push on the back of the trigger to re-engage. Uh, you want 100% sear trigger engagement area there. Okay, I've got it set up again with the uh, 
spring that I purchased from McMaster Car, the one with the 26 thousandths wire diameter, and I've got the adjustment screw set flush, so we have about 40 ounces of trigger pull. And with the bolt is cocked, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger and see what we can, without pulling it too far. All right, I want to change my mind. I don't want to make that shot. I released my finger pressure from the trigger and it immediately went back to where it's supposed to. I'll try it a couple more times here. It, it, it goes, it functions as it should. It immediately goes back and holds the hammer, holds the trigger all the way against the sear like it's supposed to. All right, we've got the Ruger American Rimfire all back together. I decided to keep the spring that I bought from McMaster Car and the, uh, the trigger adjustment screw is set right at flush. So it gives me 40 ounces of trigger pull and I'm, I've satisfied myself, my curiosity, that that's a very safe 40 ounce trigger pull. Uh, I hope this video has helped to demonstrate um, what are some of the safety hazards and, and risks you run if you decide to take that trigger return spring out completely or even replace it with a lighter weight uh, ballpoint pen spring. I know we all like our really, really light trigger pulls. However, even though we get caught up in the act of chasing the holy grail of precision, we can't lose sight of the fact that this is all about recreation. It doesn't matter if we're hunting or target shooting, it's still, it's recreation. And safety and reliability always trump accuracy in a rifle. It doesn't matter how accurate that rifle is, if it's not safe, uh, and it's not 100% reliable, it really doesn't matter. It's a moot point. And I would dare say that same philosophy applies to law enforcement and military firearms as well, every bit as well. Uh, again, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, be safe and have a great day.